Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about light rail in Nashville, Tennessee. Alrighty, so this video is going to be broken down into three sections. First part is going to be talking about light rail as it existed a hundred some odd years ago. Second part is going to be talking about the Let's Move Nashville initiative that was on the ballot in 2018 that ultimately did not pass. And I'll do a little bit of analysis regarding how much time it would have saved and how much money it would have saved. Then finally, I'm going to be talking about where things go from here as far as the future of light rail in Nashville and whether or not there'll be another ballot initiative and what you can do if you live in the area. So let's start with a brief history of light rail in Nashville. It was actually in 1866 when the first streetcar started in Nashville. By 1867, a few more lines had opened up, and the total ridership had reached 135,000 riders for that year. That's actually more than the Music City Star today. Streetcar lines continued to expand all the way up until 1890, when over 50 miles of track had been laid by various companies. In 1890, all 50 miles of those tracks were consolidated into one company. Unfortunately, in 1905, Jim Crow laws passed in the Tennessee State Legislature, which allowed for segregation on streetcar lines. As a result, there was a boycott for two years of the streetcar lines, and it hurt ridership and profits tremendously. In 1907, that boycott ended. One of the things that's odd to me about Nashville history and American history is that those segregation laws didn't come into effect until 1905, meaning that it wasn't really legal to do so before 1905. It was just the law that was passed in the Tennessee State Legislature over 40 years after the Civil War. As annoying as it may be, I guess the lawmakers just couldn't see that we all bleed the same red and pee the same yellow. In the 1920s, the streetcar ridership in Nashville continued to decline as automobiles took over. In February of 1941, the last streetcar made its run, and there was no more public transit via light rail or streetcar. 65 years later, the Music City Star opened up. It goes from way out east in Lebanon and Wilson County all the way into town. One of the things that was so remarkable about the Music City Star was the fact that it was so cheap. The entire cost of the system was only $41 million. That comes out to $1.3 million per mile or $1.95 million per mile when you adjust for inflation today. I've already talked about this in my previous videos, but I think it's just so incredible that they were able to build something for so cheap. In 2016, there was talk of expanding the Music City Star Northwest to Clarksville. Unfortunately, that did not come to fruition. While the Music City Star is commuter rail and not light rail, it's very important to consider and remember that it is part of the Nashville Public Transit Network. Now let's get to the good stuff. What happened in 2018 with the Let's Move Nashville referendum? What was it and how did it turn out? In 2018, the Let's Move Nashville referendum was a referendum to expand the public transit network throughout the city. In downtown, there would have been the hub, and it would have gone out to five directions. East towards the airport, north across the river to East Nashville, north towards TSU, west along Highway 70, and to the southeast along I-24 towards the Nashville Zoo. Additionally, it would have added bus rapid transit lines towards the southwest, towards Music Row, Belmont, Vanderbilt area. On top of that, the referendum would have added more bike lanes and expanded sidewalks. So, how much would the whole thing have cost? The final estimate for the cost of the system and operation and maintenance for 14 years was $8.95 billion. That's not cheap, but that does include operation and maintenance for 14 years. So the next question you're probably asking is, well, where would the money have come from? It would have come from a 1% increase in the sales tax driving the sales tax rate in Davidson County to 10.25%. Additionally, it would have raised hotel taxes and rental car taxes. So primarily, this would be funded by tourists visiting Nashville. So how would the city of Nashville have benefited from a system like that? First, it would have saved millions and millions of dollars on parking every single year. For starters, I did a rough estimate of how much people spend on parking at BNA and it's absurd. I counted the number of parking spots, estimated the capacity, and multiplied by the daily rate depending on the lot that you park in. And my final total came out to $60 million per year. People spend over $60 million per year parking at the Nashville airport. And you think, well, yeah, okay, so what? It's expensive to park at the airport. But what about people that want to go downtown too? If you look at how expensive surface lots are, it's gut-wrenching. If you want to park at a surface lot in downtown Nashville, it costs $30 for two hours, $48 for an entire day, and over $200 a month for a parking pass there. 
it's insane. Parking in the garage is a little less unreasonable, but still not quite reasonable at $20 per day. Not to mention, every time you drive your car, you're putting wear and tear on it, you're burning up gasoline, you're burning through tires. So the cost of driving to downtown Nashville is more than just the cost of parking. You've got to think about gas, too. On top of that, the light rail system would have saved so many people so much time. On a Friday afternoon, Google Maps estimates that it'll take over 30 minutes to drive the 9 miles from just north of Vanderbilt at the Midtown area to the Nashville airport. 30 minutes to drive 9 miles. You can do that a lot faster on a metro. Also, I want to point out that a lot of sporting events and concerts are in the downtown Nashville area, and getting in and out of those events is kind of a laborious task, and there's a ton of traffic and there's a ton of hours wasted just sitting in traffic entering and leaving those events. Just a rough back of the envelope calculation, if it, 1 million people save 10 hours a year and you value their time at $50 an hour, that saves over $500 million a year in people's time. So over the 14 years of operation, the Let's Move Nashville initiative could have potentially saved $7 billion worth of people's time. So on top of that, if businesses replaced those surface lots in downtown Nashville, it would have generated a lot more revenue from jobs and taxes instead of people just parking their cars and not having any business there. Another thing that I want to talk about is just how much money would be saved if a portion of Davidson County, which is where Nashville is located, would go car free. To do this calculation, we'll assume that just 20% of Davidson County, which has a population of roughly 700,000 residents, goes car free. That would be 140,000 residents giving up their car. How much money would they save? Assuming that the cost of car ownership is $10,000 a year, which sounds like a lot, but after you factor in gasoline, oil changes, tire changes, other maintenance, registration fees, and then the big one is depreciation, the cost of owning a car definitely comes out to more than $10,000 a year. But 10 grand a year is a good round number, so we'll multiply the 140,000 residents times $10,000 a year, and you come up with $1.4 billion. $1.4 billion is a ton of money saved every single year. If you multiply that $1.4 billion a year times 10 years, you're talking $14 billion saved. That is a ton of money. The last advantage that I want to talk about with the Let's Move Natural Metro system is safety. Second Street and Broadway are known for being kind of party, rambunctious streets, and people that drive home are a serious risk. Let's talk to me on the Metro about safety. This thing's about the Metro is you can get drunk off your ass and you don't have to worry about DUIs because you're not driving. Now, I don't know what the penalty is for a DUI. I've heard it's $10,000, but I think you can save a lot of people a lot of money if you give them the option to ride the Metro as opposed to trying to drive drunk or hopefully taking a taxi or an Uber. So, did the referendum pass? By the way, I'm talking about it. You can probably guess that it did not pass. Let's talk about why. The opposition initiative was called No Tax for Tracks. They didn't want to increase taxes to pay for the metro system. Mind you, Tennessee Department of Transportation spends tons of taxpayer money on maintaining asphalt roads every year, but No Tax for Tracks didn't want to spend taxpayer dollars on tracks. Oddly enough, they had raised over a million dollars to oppose building light rail. Oddly enough, $750,000 came from Nashville Smart Incorporated. It was a dark money organization that nobody really knew who was behind. Additionally, Americans for Prosperity, which is an organization funded by the Koch brothers, also sent out pamphlets saying, please don't vote for this, and campaigning against the Let's Move Nashville initiative. So, why would they oppose a system like this that saves so much time and so much money? Well, think about it. If you're an auto manufacturer, you need people to buy cars. If you're an oil company, you need people to buy your gasoline. If people aren't buying your cars and buying your gasoline, all of a sudden you lose profitability. If you're an oil company, you need people to waste their time sitting in cars and waste their money on your stupid gasoline. I'm going to get a little bit political here, but I know that freedom from something is just as important, if not more so important, than freedom to do something. So, being able to be free from whatever I want is just as important as being able to do whatever I want. Those two freedoms go hand in hand. So what will happen in the future? Are people going to have to continue to pay way too much money to park at the airport? Or will there be a metro to the airport from downtown like there is in Atlanta? Will people have to continue to waste their lives sitting in traffic? Or will other options be available in the future? 
That may come down to a referendum in 2024. While there aren't any major rumblings of it happening yet, 2024 is the earliest that something like that could come to fruition. If you go to different cities throughout the United States and throughout the world and ride a metro system, you quickly understand how convenient it is. If you can live car free in a city that has a metro system, you save thousands of dollars a year on car maintenance and repair and registration. You save so much time not sitting in traffic and you save a ton of money not having to pay for parking. Or if you're just visiting a city, it makes things much more convenient as you don't have to rent a car. And so you can save a lot more money and spend a lot more time doing the things you want to do as opposed to having to worry about parking and renting a car and getting gasoline. Will there be a referendum in 2024? I don't know, but if there is, the No Tax for Tracks initiative is already prepared to throw money at opposing rail tracks in Nashville. Ultimately, the people of Nashville are going to have to decide how badly they want to avoid wasting money on parking and wasting time sitting in traffic. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope this sparks some good discussions. If you have a comment, please leave it in the comments. There's a lot of good discussion and occasionally some not so good discussion. So if you want to leave a negative comment too, that's okay. I say bring it on. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.